we are gonna add input. We will make sure to give you the power to pick up your hologram and place it where you want it. So our objectives are we'll visualize your gaze and make sure that you know where you're looking in the world. We'll draw a cursor to do that. Next, we'll add gesture input and we'll make sure you can pick up your hologram and place it where you want. And lastly, we'll make sure to add spatial mapping so that we can place our hologram on a real world surface in the HoloLens. We'll use some gaze and gesture APIs from Windows Mixed Reality and we'll make sure to use cursor and input prefabs from the Holo Toolkit to quickly get going. So gaze works the same way on your immersive headset as well as HoloLens. So once we write that code to draw a cursor, it's gonna work the same way on both device types. We worked really hard with our partners to get the inside out tracking working on immersive headsets as well. Gestures on HoloLens, you will have the AirTap. And on the immersive headset, we'll wire up the Xbox gamepad button A, and we'll wire that up to the AirTap gesture. So you will write the same code, but we'll have one script that lets you do the mapping from the Xbox controller A to the same AirTap gesture. All right, with that, let's go ahead and get going. Head back into Unity, close out the build setting dialog. And at the bottom left, let's find the Holo Toolkit folder in the project panel, drill into input, and then prefabs. This time, we're gonna drag the input manager prefab, and we're gonna make it a child of the manager's object. Drop it when you see an oval, and that's gonna make it a child of managers. So I just wanna quickly show you what all we have here, pre-attached in the prefab. The first thing we have is a gaze manager, and gaze manager performs a unity physics raycast that starts from your head position in the forward direction of where you're gazing, and then we collect all of the intersection information and we save that off. And then we can use a cursor to render at that spot. Next, we have a gaze stabilizer, and that basically stabilizes over a period of time some small head jitters and movements that you might have naturally. Input manager sends you all of the awesome events when you wanna know things like when your gaze has entered a hologram and when it's left a hologram. So it does all of that input event routing for you. Stabilization plane, think of it like an invisible quad, a rectangle plane being rendered at the spot where you're gazing and that really makes your holograms appear super stable and without jitter. Lastly, we have a focus manager that does the arbitration between whether your cursor should follow your head gaze or should it follow a motion controller. But because we are, we are recommending a gaze and commit model, we're gonna have our cursor follow our head gaze and not our motion controller. All right, next let's visualize our gaze and let's go back into the Holo Toolkit folder. So Holo Toolkit input prefabs drill into cursor and then find the second asset in there which is cursor go ahead drag and drop into the open space of the hierarchy panel double click on the cursor we have two assets in there one is a purple donut shaped cursor on hologram and that is the cursor you will see when you gaze at the island or any hologram which has a collider and then cursor off hologram, which is a fuzzy point-like kind of a cursor, which you will see when you gaze away from the hologram. We just want you to know where you are in the experience at all times, and that's why we have two different types of cursors. Next, I wanna show you how the toolkit wires up gestures. So let's go ahead and expand the manager's uh, object in the hierarchy, and then expand input manager. Go ahead, click on gestures input, and look at the two key scripts on the right. The first one is gestures input, and this script does the hard job uh, of signing up for the uh, super awesome gestures using the Windows Mixed Reality API gesture recognizer, and that does the super awesome job of detecting a hand was detected, gesture was happened, and it was fired, and then we give another event using the input manager prefab to the developers that can work across different device types. Gamepad input is the script that maps the Xbox button A to that air tab gesture. So you'll see that gamepad button A has a mapping called Fire 1, and that's basically the default mapping that Unity apps typically tend to have in project settings input. 
And so we didn't change that mapping. We've kept the default mapping. You could change this in your apps, but we kept it the same because it's a toolkit thing. So I want to just quickly show you how we are handling this. So let's go ahead, double click on gamepad input and open it up in Visual Studio. The key thing I want to show you is in the update function. You can see we are listening for input.get button down and that is for gamepad button A, map to fire one. And that's how we can tell that you've pressed the gamepad button A and then we tell the input manager to raise and input has been clicked. And whichever hologram is handling the input clicked, you can write that code once and it'll work on HoloLens and the immersive headset with this one script. Next, let's make sure to add spatial mapping to our app so we can bring the real world in. And then we'll add spatial anchors to our island. But what is a spatial anchor? Why are we gonna do this? Let's talk a little bit about that. We get a lot of awesome questions on this. So a spatial anchor is essentially any reference point in your real world space. It could be any point. It could be a point on the table. It could be a point in the middle of nowhere. It's a point that not just has positional data, but it has a lot of visual tracking data. So HoloLens uses visual tracking, awesome computer vision algorithms and visible wavelengths to figure out these clues and tracking points. And if my slide is next, there we go. So HoloLens uses visual tracking to build up this awesome spatial anchor. You can save this spatial anchor and attach it to a hologram to make it appear super stable. And you can even share the spatial anchor with others. And when you do that, you send all of that visual tracking data as well so that other person can relocate themselves in the same world as you are. We use spatial anchors to render holograms relative to them. And stability of a hologram is best if you render a hologram within three meters of a spatial anchor. Unity exposes spatial anchors using a component called world anchor. So if you happen to hear us say world anchor or anchor, we, we mean a world anchor. Spatial mapping also uses world anchors under the hood, but more importantly, it uses depth maps to create an awesome visualization of your space around you. Anchors on their own don't need spatial mapping. They only need visual tracking. All right, let's add this awesome spatial mapping in our app and make sure to bring in the real world. So let's head back into Unity and this time find Holler Toolkit, Spatial Mapping, and prefabs. And from in there, let's go ahead and drag the second prefab, which is spatial mapping, and drop it into the open space of the hierarchy panel. So we're dropping, dropping a spatial mapping prefab. All right, one key thing I want to call out on this prefab on the right side in the inspector panel is the script called spatial mapping manager. We use the wireframe material attached on it to show you a visualization of your space around you. So when you will perform the air tap and pick up your island, we'll render spatial mapping. And we do that by checking, by saying draw visual meshes to be true. And then when we're done rendering spatial mapping, we set that to false. Next, let's go ahead and add code to actually pick up the island so you can move it around with you. Go ahead and select island and expand it. Double click on mixed reality land. I just wanna make sure you're adding the script to the right object. And then on the right side in the inspector panel, click add component. Search for a script called tap to place. And once you see that in the search results, click on it and it'll be added to your game object. We have an anchor that we'll attach onto your island and we just call it saved anchor friendly name. You can rename that if you'd like. Let's go ahead and check the box that says place parent on tap because we want the entire collection to move with you when you're gazing around when you've picked up the island and that's why we're checking that box. And let's change the Y offset to be 0.1 because we want your island to show up a little bit above the spatial mesh, not under it. Next, let's double click on tap to place and open it up in Visual Studio. And I wanna show you how we are implementing the tap gesture. So right at the class declaration level, you'll see we're implementing an interface from the input manager called I input click handler. And that's the interface that is gonna work for you across different devices and make sure your events are routed from the gesture recognizer. We're gonna look at a function called on input click. So at the top right, go ahead and click on the drop down, and you can find the function call which is on input clicked. 
And inside that function, we are going to toggle your state. Once you perform the air tap, we're going to, or the gamepad button A, we're going to toggle your state of whether you're in placement mode or not. If you are in placement mode, we will tell spatial mapping to start rendering the meshes. And we will remove any anchors that were attached onto you. Because if you're going to move a hologram that has an anchor attached, the anchor transform is going to override the transform of the object. And that's why we don't attach an anchor to a moving hologram. It's only attached to a stationary hologram. In the else block, when you are done uh, placing, once you perform the air tap again and you're done, you're, you've selected the place you want to put it at, we tell spatial mapping to stop rendering and we attach the anchor, the world anchor, onto your game object. And then we save it. Some fun pro tips that I find useful that I want to share with you is uh, once you've added an anchor, attached an anchor to your hologram, let's say you happen to bloom out of your application and you bloom back in, you launch your app again, your hologram will stay where it was. It's going to persist and it's going to remember where your object was and it will show up right there. Let's say your hololens restarted and you relaunched your app. Your anchor is still going to persist. But if you uninstalled or deleted your application from your device and you reinstalled your app, your anchor is going to be blown away. You'll have to create a new one. Let's add one last script that does all of this awesome anchor persisting and management for us. Let's click on the manager's object in Unity. So the manager's object. And then on the right side in the inspector panel, click add component. And search for a script called world anchor manager. Once you see that in the search results, go ahead, add it to your component. And this does exactly what I was just describing to you. It's going to make sure your anchor is saved with a good name. It can find tracking, load your anchor, and make sure your hologram appears where it was. This takes care of our deploy on, spatial, on the HoloLens uh, headset. Let's make sure that we can actually ground your hologram in the immersive headset as well. Because when you deployed it last time, it, there was just a skybox and just the island. And we really want to ground it on something. So we're going to use stage APIs to make sure we can find a floor in your immersive headset and render something below you. And then we'll give you a table to put your island on. Let's head back in Unity. And in the hierarchy panel, let's go ahead and expand the mixed reality camera parent. You'll see we have a game object called play space. Go ahead, select that. And on the right side in the inspector panel, Check to enable play space. It's the, it's the grayed out cube that you see, and there's a checkbox right next to it. That gray cube should light up and look blue, and you know you've done this right. If you look a little further down in the inspector panel, you'll see we have a play space manager that takes a floor quad, and that's basically going to be a green super giant quad that we're going to render just below you, so you have some sense of grounding in the immersive experience. And sometimes it can happen that uh, the quad is going to appear at your nose. And that's probably because the device is not tracking. Uh, it doesn't know where the tracking is. So perhaps try looking around to get the tracking back. And then it'll find it and put it on the floor. If not, then we'll just run setup again, set, set a height of uh, four feet, because you're seated. And then we can run the experience again. Next, let's drag the table asset that I was mentioning. So let's find the app prefabs folder next. So at the bottom left in the project panel, drill into the app prefabs folder and find the asset called VR room. Vroom. I love that name. Go ahead, drag Vroom and drop it into the open space of the hierarchy. And if you double click on Vroom, you'll see it's just a simple table with a base. But the key thing we wanted to do is spark your imagination here and think of the things you can do here, right? You can create such a cool immersive experience with maybe a living room. I really want to put this academy room in the immersive headset. You can create your kitchen. You can create whatever you want. And so we just wanted to spark that imagination. And you can even bring your VR room from your other VR applications that you might have made in the past. And you can bring it over to Windows Mixed Reality and see how that goes for you. So. With that, let's go ahead and file save scenes. And I just want to remind you of your objectives. Your objective on your HoloLens in this deploy is going to be to make sure you observe two cursors, cursor on hologram, cursor off hologram. Then you will gaze at the island, perform the air tap gesture, 
gaze at a different location, perform the air tap when you're ready so you can place your island. Your objective on the immersive headset is going to be gaze at the um, island, press A on your Xbox controller, and then look towards the table that we added, and then press A again so that you can place your island on the table.